This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Right now at 6 on Good Morning Indiana. The votes have been cast and counted. So now, what's next? I sit down one-on-one -on -one with Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hoxett to talk about the city's future. Indigo's red line has been free since its launch in September, but how much longer will it stay that way? Thousands of jobs are available this morning and employers are hiring Hoosiers. This morning, the group looking for more women to join their trade of skilled workers. And the countdown to the holidays is on. We're live at a central Indiana tradition as they open up shop. And what should you never carry in your wallet? This morning we're breaking down what's in your pocketbook potentially putting you at risk so you don't waste your money. Six o'clock here on Wednesday, November 6th. It is midweek on this Wednesday, almost close to payday. I'm excited. Hey, I'm excited too. And I'm also excited because I believe Todd Klossman would call these bonus days when we have <laughs> some days you can get outside, even though it's getting colder out there. Todd, this is one of those days, right? Yeah, you know, today's one of those days you just need to take advantage of, maybe rake up some of those leaves in the yard because it's the warmest day we probably have in the next seven to 10 days. And we don't have much in the way of precipitation heading our way, at least during the daytime hours today. So you'll need to sunglasses for a good majority of the day today and definitely need that medium weight jacket this morning with temperatures that are hovering in the low to mid 30s across the area. I did not check the umbrella because I don't think you need it until probably after sunset. That's when we're going to start to see some showers head our way. There are a few flurries this morning in northern locations, but they're fading away pretty quickly here. And once the sun comes up, we'll start to burn a little bit of this cloud cover off. And that's why we'll have the partly sunny skies. But it's this batch of rain that's down to our south that's going to arrive here here uh, later on this evening. So as we get you out the door on uh, this Wednesday morning, temperatures are chilly. There's no doubt about that, but we'll have plenty of sunshine by the noon hour. We're up to 50 degrees. We'll warm into the mid 50s this afternoon, but then a big cold time cold front heads our way starting tomorrow. We'll talk about that and the rain and snow showers heading our way in just a few minutes. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks. Here's a look right now at your drive up on the north side, I-465. This is a look near Ditch Road from our in-dot traffic camera. You can see traffic moving across your screen, traveling up to speed both eastbound and westbound. No delays to slow you down. So let's take a look here at some drive times. This is over on the northeast side heading southbound this morning on I-69. If you're traveling from State Road 13 down to the I-465 ramps, no problems at this hour. It is a 13-minute drive. The time now is 6.02 and this morning the votes are in as we begin our Democracy 2019 coverage. Hundreds of races across central Indiana have been decided after you cast your ballot on Tuesday. Now at stake we have mayor seats, council seats, a number of schools referenda on the ballots. One of the key races, of course, was for mayor of Indianapolis. Democratic incumbent Mayor Joe Hogsett will serve a second term. He run, won by a decisive margin, beating Republican challenger Jim Merritt and Libertarian candidate Douglas McNaughton. Jim Merritt will continue serving as a state senator. He announced his candidacy in early January and focused much of his campaign on the city's problems with crime and infrastructure. During his concession speech, he praised the people of Indianapolis. It's been really joy to get to know the city I've lived in for 60 years. Um, every nook, every corner I explored and, and um, we have a lot of great shining stars out there who are taking care of our city for us in a very much a volunteer way. And uh, I, um, as many of you know in this room, I will endeavor to and do more in my community because of what uh, I've experienced in the last 10 months. Merritt says he hopes supporters build on the issues of his campaign. And with that big margin of victory on Tuesday, the question now becomes, what's next for the city of Indianapolis? So, so let's ask the man who won that big victory last night, the newly elected mayor of Indianapolis, Joe Hoxha. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, Todd said we needed uh, sunglasses. I need them for the bags under my eyes, actually. It was the party that big last night? No, it wasn't the party. It was just the long day and the long evening, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back up and going th this morning. You talked about that you were not done building, so mm -hmm. in the next term, your next 30, 60 days, what are the priorities for the city of Indianapolis for you to get accomplished? It will continue to be public safety, uh, making sure that our streets and our uh, neighborhoods are as safe as we can make them. It will continue to be infrastructure. You know, December and January, February are just right around the corner. 
Um, and so we still have infrastructure challenges in Indianapolis. But uh, we'll continue to build and, uh, and leverage the success that we've enjoyed in downtown in, back into our neighborhoods. I think we're making real progress in the quality of life and the quality of place that Indianapolis enjoys. So we're going to continue to build on what has already been started in the first term. Your challenger, Jim Merritt, really slammed you on the issue of public safety. Did, did, because he lost, did the public not buy that message? Or was that, a, was that not a true picture of what was happening in the city? Well, I think that the public understands that while uh, it's a it's a challenge to move that ship in the right direction. That's exactly where we're headed. The last two years, violent crime is down. This year, we may very well enjoy a year-over-year -year reduction in the number of homicides for the first time since 2012. So uh, we're making progress. And I think the people of Indianapolis understand that that progress will pay great dividends over the long run. Uh, public Serving in public life is difficult. Uh, in the second term, usually people People leave the administration not because of the leader but because they want to go back into private life or they see more money at the end of the road. Are you expecting any major changes to the administration now that you enter the second term? Well there probably will be changes Raphael. I mean uh, as you just said people want to take advantage of opportunities that are presented and I am very supportive of that. I hope there won't be wholesale changes. Certainly I don't intend to have that, but we'll make changes where changes are necessary. Roger Penske is now the owner of the Indianapolis 500. He, will, he is. He will be in January when it all gets together with the federal paperwork. What do you make of that and what will that mean as you look to the future of the city? Yeah, I, I met with uh, Mr. Penske yesterday uh, uh, of all days, election day. I mean, uh, I worked a meeting in with uh, Roger. I think uh, it's great for Indianapolis. It's great for the town of Speedway. Uh, the investments that he's talking about making. Moving the Indianapolis Motor Speedway from the racing capital of the world to perhaps the entertainment capital of the world is in keeping with what we try to uh, promote in the city of Indianapolis. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. Best of luck in your second term. Thank you, Raphael. I'll see you today at 11 for the Officers uh, Honors Awards. Exactly. All right. Lauren? And, and Raphael, those mayoral races, not the only thing on Tuesday's ballot. Voters in several communities also had the opportunity to vote on several different school referenda. And our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with what passed and what didn't. Kelsey, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so several schools were hoping to pass referendums. The two biggest ones that we were looking at was in Center Grove and here in Lawrence Township. Now, Center Grove schools hope to bring in $24.8 million over the next eight years to increase student safety and security. The referendum did not pass, however, with more than 4,000 people voting against it. The school board wanted to use the referendum to hire more, more school resource officers and camera monitoring systems. And in Lawrence Township, voters passed a $191 million referendum that will take place over 20 years. They plan to make upgrades to aging buildings. They say Lawrence Central High School hasn't had a major renovation since 1993. And where we're at here today at Lawrence North High School has never had a major renovation. Now, Carmel and Zionsville schools are also celebrating past referendums this morning, but uh, Danville did not get the green light on their referendum. We've got all those results for you over on the RTV6 News app. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. You can get caught up on the election results from around the state right now on the IndyChannel.com and the RTV6 app. Results are also scrolling at the bottom of your screen. At 6.08, Indigo announcing this morning that it will extend free bus rides on the red line now through November the 30th. And only on RTV6, we're learning why Indigo could be due a whopping six-figure refund. Collection of fares on the red line have been delayed because the my key fare vending machines have not been ready. A call six investigates has learned the company behind the system will be responsible for refunding the bus company for the lost fares, which may be in the six figures. The amount has not been determined yet. Only on RTV6 this morning, we're talking to the leaders of the state's largest public transit system about what's next. So let, let us be clear that there were provisions contained within our contract to uh, allow us to go after the contractor for any loss of revenue. And we are going through that process right now. So we are collecting the data from our vehicles on a daily basis to be able to go back to that contractor to be able to be reimbursed. 
Indigo is expecting to start collecting fares on the red line on Sunday, December the 1st. More on the possible range of what Indigo may be due in refunds. That's coming up at 6.30 right here on Good Morning Indiana. A grocery store on the near northwest side is doing well five months after opening. It's something people who live there say they are so thankful for. Cleo's Bodega Grocery and Cafe sits right near 24th and MLK. The area used to be one of Indy's largest food deserts. Brandon Cosby, one of the people behind the store say they hope to be an example for other areas of the city. We really wanted to be able to build a model um, of something that the residents knew belonged to them and that they would be proud to have in their neighborhood. The Office of Public Health and Safety is accepting applications right now for neighborhood food champions. Those individuals will attend workshops and come, with way, come up with ways to address food access. Time now, 610, and today you can start something that you may not have thought about just yet. And that's your holiday shopping list. The annual Christmas Gift and Hobby Show kicking off today at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. And that's where we find our own Alyssa Donovan. Alyssa, tell us what the show has to offer this year. Oh my gosh, Lauren, it has so much to offer this year. There are 350 vendors here at the West Pavilion at the Indiana State Fairgrounds, and they are going to be available for five days for shoppers. I want to show you one of the vendors here. This is an example of some of those handmade items that you can get here at the show. Some of those specialty items. We have tutus. We have these barrettes that are clearly handmade. Some of these really unique things that you can get for your holiday shopping. We also have, of course, that typical holiday holiday shopping here. We have some of those more like uh, dec decor and also some ornaments, whatever you're looking for for your holiday shopping. Now, this is going to be a great show. Along with shopping, the show also has entertainment to get you into that holiday mood. Throughout the event, there will be performances from local school choirs and dancers. And if you're familiar with the event, Merry Money is back. If you register, you have the chance to win money to spend right here at the show. Now, doors open this morning at 10 a.m. This event goes through Sunday, but before the doors open, we're going to light this Christmas tree to get things kicked off. We're also going to be giving away some free tickets to the show. Tickets are $13, so if you don't have to pay that, you can spend that money on more gifts. We'll have that coming up at 6.30. I'll send it back to you in the studio. Next in Hiring Hoosiers, the call to get women into high-paying skilled trade jobs. I'll take you to a training program waiting to sign, yes, you up, and the possibility to earn money while working on a college degree. But first, let's check in on your forecast with Todd Clausen. Good morning, Todd. Raphael, good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. As you take to the roadways here this morning and you start your morning commute, you're definitely going to need to turn the heaters on with temperatures that are in the 30s. You will not need to turn your windshield wipers on this morning. That changes, though, later on this evening and for the day tomorrow. As some rain and snow heads our way. We'll talk all about it in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time is 612. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hoosiers is our initiative from RTV6 focused on connecting you to jobs and training programs. So we've been sharing in recent months that desperate need to get people into skilled trades. This is an amazing program. As I learned, there's also a push to find more women to fill the ranks. Lacey Cherry Johnson is in her element. She's working with her hands learning how to put up an acoustic ceiling. It's all part of her training. I more or less am starting from the ground up with this. Lacey is an artist and was looking for something with a steady income that would allow her to continue living her art and paying the bills. So she signed up to become a carpenter with the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Their facility is in Greenwood. The work ethic of being an, being an artist or being a motivated, hardworking person, I feel like is essential. I do like to be outside. I do like to use my hands um, and create something and look at what was built at the end of the day and, and see it and be like, wow, I'm really gratified by that. I built something. During our visit, I stated the obvious and got this response. I'm looking in the room. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the only woman. Yes. Lacey at the time was the only woman in the room working on skills for a job with a starting salary of $63,000 with benefits 
and the promise of a two-year college degree. With the union, everybody gets paid the same um, and the work is the same and you feel like you're on par with the men, but the male-female thing will only change if women who are interested in hands-on work join and then it won't be such a, an imbalance. She's doing her part, balancing career and family with her head up and her eyes on the prize. And the best of luck to her. We have more information on the free training available right now through the Regional Council of Carpenters. You can find that information in our story on the RTV6 app as well as our website, hiringhoosiers.com. All right, and we are taking a look at the weather right now. Todd, I don't like this difference in numbers that you have up. I'm just going to stand right here. Good and idea. Show you I like this that. One. I like that. Just right? Cover so, it up. All right. Cover it up. So, today's high is 55 degrees. Not bad for this time of year. Our normal high is 57. Uh, so that's not an issue in our forecast. But as I get out of the way here, yeah, by Tuesday morning, the temperature is going to be down to 18 degrees. We have not one, but two big time cold fronts that are going to be heading our way in the coming days. This morning, as you walk out the door, temperatures are near freezing in some locations. 30 in Richmond, 32 in Crawfordsville, as well as Bloomington. 37 is the current temperature in Indianapolis. So as we work our way throughout the day today, temperatures will moderate quite steady as we work our way through the morning hours and eventually into the afternoon. We'll get up to right around 55 degrees, most likely between 3 and 4 o'clock. So it's not bad. You throw in partly sunny skies today, and it's a decent day for us. Now this morning, there are a few flurries here in northern locations. Uh, you may see one, but it will not impact you really much at all, and they're basically fizzling away. And once the sun comes up, we will start to burn a little bit of this cloud cover off. But it's uh, this little batch of rainfall you see here in southern Arkansas and into Missouri that is going to be heading our way in the coming days. So while the daytime hours today are dry, if you're going to be out this evening, anytime I would say after 6 o'clock, we'll start to bring some scattered showers into the forecast. But it's all rain with temperatures that will be in the upper 40s. So let me time it out for you hour by hour on TrueCast because there's a lot going on in the next 24 to 36 hours. It starts off nice and quiet, as I mentioned this morning, partly sunny skies. This evening, the clouds start to gather. And then here comes the first round of rainfall this evening. It's just some light scattered rain showers. It becomes a little more steady overnight tonight, especially for tomorrow morning's commute. We'll be dealing with rain showers to the south. And then as we bring the cold air in, we'll change some of that rain over over to some snow showers throughout the course of the latter half of the morning drive and throughout much of the morning hours tomorrow before it starts to make its way out of the area. As far as accumulation, not expecting an impact on the roadways. We're in the 50s today. The snow will be falling when the sun's up. It'll be behind the clouds, obviously, but temperatures tomorrow are going to be above freezing as well. So while there could be some minor accumulation on grassy areas, maybe on your car if you leave it outside, the road should not be impacted tomorrow. But then temperatures do fall below low freezing and in fact tomorrow morning you're waking up to temperatures or Friday morning rather temperatures anywhere from 17 to 22 degrees. It's the first push of some very very cold air that's heading our way and then as we work our way into Saturday and Sunday it's not bad. 45 on Saturday 51 on Sunday. Saturday morning if you are running the monumental marathon temperatures do start in the 20s but the winds are light and the skies are clear. It's early next week on Monday that we get the big blast of cold cold air that is going to come in here and we are talking about temperatures that are probably maybe not even going to reach the freezing mark on Monday and Tuesday and then there's that 18 degree temperature on Tuesday morning as that Arctic air comes in some additional snow showers will be possible maybe some minor accumulations it looks like during the day on Monday. All right Todd thanks so much we do have a traffic alert for drivers to our east take a look here at I-70 now the bottom left corner of your screen you can't see it too well because of our banner there on the screen, but there it is. You can see the construction vehicle in the right lane. Right lane is closed on eastbound, or excuse me, westbound I-70. This is approaching Mount Comfort Road. And yesterday we had construction in this area and it really backed up traffic. So let's take a look at our map right now and I'll show you the areas impacted. So if you're heading in from Greenfield, Knightstown, areas to the east, just a heads up, I-70 may get backed up as we get closer to the seven o'clock hour. We had these delays yesterday. Again, use caution. You may want to hop down to US 40 if you want to avoid all delays this morning. Once you get past this spot, 
at Mount Comfort Road, it is smooth sailing. People across the country casting their vote yesterday to make a difference where they live. Here's some of the major takeaways from this election day. Democrats will control the Virginia House and Senate for the first time in more than 20 years. Kentucky's gubernatorial race was too close to call despite a last minute endorsement from President Trump for the Republican incumbent. The Democratic candidate has declared victory with a narrow lead. And in 2021, New York City will join Maine and San Francisco with a ranked choice voting system. Uh, Vigo County voters are saying yes to the possibility of a casino in Terre Haute. The question was part of a referendum on Tuesday's ballot. And now potential casino operators have until December the 1st to submit their proposals. From there, the Indiana Gaming Commission will consider those applications. A spectacle entertainment has signed a letter of intent with Hard Rock International. That means if the state grants spectacles proposal, Terre Haute's casino could be branded as a Hard Rock casino. So your wallet carries a lot of important things, right? Coming up here at 626, what you should never keep in your wallet so you don't waste your money. We'll be right back. Today at Speedway.com. It is 625 and now it's time for what's trending at 6. A high school student in Yorktown, yeah. Virginia who cheers for her school has a huge fan this morning. Her dad, <laughs> a Kelly Holland. <laughs> Scott Willard's son attends the same school and he noticed Holland mimicking his daughter's cheer moves. You see him there in the blue? <laughs> Willard recorded Holland's epic moves and posted the video on Facebook saying, this dude rocks. We agree. Oh, Get yeah. that dad some pom poms. Yeah, oh my you goodness. You go, dad. 911, what's your emergency? Well, sheriff's deputies in California lending a helping hand to a bear <laughs> stuck while dumpster diving. The Placer <laughs> County Sheriff says the bear is known around the area as T shirt. Why T shirt? Well, he got that nickname because of a white patch of fur on his chest. This wasn't T shirt's first run in with the law. According to the posting, he's had other prior encounters with police. Oh I say God. leave the bears alone. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this looks like snowballs have taken over Ooh. a Finland beach, but now these are actually mounds of ice. They're covering miles of shoreline. Ice balls form when rough water near the shore breaks up a layer of slushy ice. As the waves crash ashore, it causes the ice to spin in wow. place, which turns them into balls. I would not want to be around a snowball fight if those are ice. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's being tossed to you. And Todd, I believe that that same phenomenon happens on Lake Michigan. Yeah, they right? can get that on Lake Michigan. Yeah, it's not completely uncommon that you see that, but it's mm. a spectacular sight up there. But yeah, you wouldn't want to get hit by one of those. No. Uh, that is for sure. So no ice in our forecast here this Good. morning. Good. It's chilly though. Temperatures are currently in the 30s across the area, but we're dry. But as the day goes on, after we get past a sunset, our rain chances will start to ramp up. And after this rain moves in, it's going to turn into a pretty wet pattern as we work our way through the overnight hours and into tomorrow's commute where some of that may change to snow. But today, take advantage of the daytime hours with partly sunny skies and temperatures that'll eventually top off today in the mid to upper 50s. Todd, thank you. If you ever lost your wallet, mm. do you know every single thing nope. that's inside of it? I don't. Everything you would have to replace? Nope. Well, worse, do you have any idea how much personal information that thief could get their hands on? A lot. Yeah. A lot of information. So working for you, John Mattery shows you what you should never carry in your wallet so you don't waste your money. These days, most of us are always on guard against identity theft, changing passwords and never giving information to a stranger on the phone. But then why are you still carrying so many risky things in your purse or wallet? What's in your wallet? Kiplinger's Magazine has released a list of things you should never carry in your purse or wallet due to the risk of it getting stolen. If it's bursting at the seams, Kiplinger says that's a red flag you're carrying too much, which could be a nightmare to replace. Things to never keep in the wallet? Your social security card or old Medicare card that shows your social. A password cheat sheet for your phone, Facebook, or bank account. A spare house key. Remember, your wallet has your home address in it. And blank checks. Yes, it's old school but many people still carry one. And from the dozen that stink file, carrying more than one or two credit cards in your wallet. If it's stolen, thieves can make a lot of purchases quickly, leaving you saying, doesn't that stink? And leave the gift cards out too. They can be spent without any trace. 
One last tip, take a photo or make a copy of any important documents in your wallet. So if it does get lost, you can easily get replacements. You don't waste your money working for you. I'm John Batteries. Good morning, Indiana. John, thank you. For more money-saving tips and ideas, you can visit the money section of our website, theindychannel.com. Now on Good Morning Indiana on this Wednesday morning, here's a look at your 6.30 news feed. Mayor Joe Hogsett cruised to re-election in Indianapolis. Hogsett defeated his Republican and Libertarian challengers. Democrats also solidified their control of the City County Council by picking up six seats in that body. Breaking news from the city's north side. Police say a fight led to gunfire injuring a man and a woman at an apartment complex. The shooting happened on Orchard Terrace around 10.30 last night. Right now, police say that man is in serious condition. The woman expected to survive. Police have not released any information about suspects. If you are a woman who had a tattoo done by this man, a Kentucky Sheriff's Office wants to hear from you. Police arrested George Clapp last month on multiple counts of rape and sexual abuse. Clapp tattooed multiple people in Kentucky, Illinois, and here in Indiana. It's unclear why investigators are asking for tattoo clients to come forward. And here's an early heads up. If you ride the red line, the monumental marathon is coming Saturday and it will impact service. Indigo will operate a modified red line route during the race. It will operate in two segments, one north of 38th Street, the other south of 38th Street. We have more information about all the changes on our website, theindychannel.com. And it is 6.30 here on our Wednesday, November the 6th. I want to welcome you into Good Morning Indiana. Well, good morning. It's a little chilly, right? Yeah. 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 So if you are heading up to the bus stop or sending the kids out to the bus stop here soon, what do they need to wear? You know, you definitely need to bundle up here this morning, but you do not need the rain gear, so that's good news. Okay. At least it's dry out there. We have a few flurries in northern locations, uh, but those are not going to impact you. And kind of a big temperature spread this morning, anywhere from 29 to 37 degrees. And the reason why we have that is some areas have clearer skies down to the south where the skies are clearer. That's where the temperatures are a little cooler, where the clouds are in place. You're running in the mid 30s. Here are those flurries that I was mentioning to the north Lafayette over to Monticello and Delphi. You may be seeing a few of them right now. It's not going to cause any issues on the road roadways though and most of this precipitation is heading uh, to the north that's not going to linger very long however to our south we do have some showers across Arkansas and southern Missouri those will arrive here later tonight after sunset so in between there we have actually a decent day in store for us starting off again with a little bit of cloud cover once the sun comes up we will burn that off quite quickly as soon as we get into that sunshine partly cloudy skies by the time we get to the noon hour and a temperature right around 50 degrees. We'll go up a little more from there. We'll talk about that and also the rain and snow heading our way for tomorrow coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, we do have a traffic alert for drivers to our east. If you take westbound I-70 in from areas like Greenfield, Knightstown, you may run into this. A backup right now. Things are at a standstill due to some ongoing construction in the right lanes here as you approach Mount Comfort Road. This is a spot we had trouble with yesterday morning around the same time. So if you're traveling through that area, maybe your best bet would be to hop down on US 40, take that westbound into the Indianapolis area instead. This is a spot we will continue to keep our eyes on and we'll keep you updated. Also breaking this morning, fire crews are working to figure out what caused a fire at a duplex early this morning. Firefighters were called to North Grant Avenue around 3.15 this morning on reports of two homes on fire. Firefighters say no one was hurt. We'll continue to update you as we learn more throughout the day. Time now, 6.32, and voters in several school districts all across central Indiana were asked whether they wanted to raise their taxes to help fund a variety of education initiatives. Uh, some were focused on school safety. Others were aimed at the classroom as well as renovation of aging buildings and those results of the referenda were mixed across central Indiana. rtv 6s Kelsey Anderson is live this morning with more on those results and Kelsey fill us in because they're all across the board. Well, yeah, like you said, there were tons across across the central Indiana. Um, the big ticket item ones we're following were Center Grove and Lawrence Township. So in Center Grove schools, they hope to bring in $24.8 million over the next eight years to increase student safety and security. That referendum did not pass with more than 4,000 people voting against it. The school board wanted to use the referendum to hire more school resource officers and camera monitoring systems. And in Lawrence Township, voters passed a 100 
$391 million referendum that will take place over 20 years. They plan to make upgrades to aging buildings. They say Lawrence Central High School hasn't had a major renovation since 1993, and Lawrence North has never had a major renovation, and that, that referendum did pass here in Lawrence Township. Now, uh, some other schools that are celebrating this morning is Carmel and Zionsville. Both of their referendums passed, but in Danville, they did not get the green light for their referendum. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. At 6.34, we continue our Democracy 2019 coverage. Moments ago, I sat down with Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett to talk about his re-election victory. This is what he says will be the priorities for his second term. It will continue to be public safety, uh, making sure that our streets and our uh, neighborhoods are as safe as we can make them. It will continue to be infrastructure. You know, December and January, February are just right around the corner. Um, and so we still have infrastructure challenges in Indianapolis. But uh, we'll continue to build and, uh, and leverage the success that we've enjoyed in downtown in, back into our neighborhoods. I think we're making real progress in the quality of life and the quality of place that Indianapolis enjoys. That was moments ago right here on Good Morning Indiana. Hogsett is Indianapolis's 49th mayor. The last Democrat to serve two terms was Bart Peterson, elected back in 1999. You can find all the results from Tuesday's elections right now. Just go to the RTV6 app or our website, theindychannel.com. Click on the election results story for a recap of all of the important and key races in central Indiana. Those results are also scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Here at 635, the holidays are right around around the corner and starting today you can get a jump start on your shopping. The 2019 Christmas Gift and Hobby Show opens this morning at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Our Alyssa Donovan is live there where they are about to light the Christmas tree to kick off the event. Alyssa, good morning. That's right. We're going to get started with that right now. I'm here with Heather Newsom. She is the show manager. Let's do that countdown. Let's get this lit. You ready? Three. Two, one. And that's the start of the Gift and Hobby Show here at the Indiana Fairgrounds. Heather, just tell me a little bit about the show, what people can expect this year. Um, anything and everything for your shopping needs. Um, homemade stuff, wine, Ooh. cheese, olive oils, home decor, clothing. I mean, you name it, it's probably here. So a lot of unique items. And what can people expect? There's a lot more than just shopping happening here. Oh, yeah, we have an, a stage. We also have our tree. Um, Santa Claus will be here. Gotta have Santa. That's right. Yeah. And um, is there anything new this year that you'd like to talk about? Um, I don't think so. It's it's pretty much a good mix. Up. We do have about mm, maybe 90 new exhibitors. So there's oh, wow. about... There's a new mix of some uh, new stuff out here. Okay, and what would you say to someone who might think, hey, it's too early for holiday shopping yet? Well, it's never too early because you got to get it done. All right, <laughs> that's true. And the show opens this morning at 10 a.m. It goes until 8 p.m. tonight. Tickets are $13. You can buy them for $2 off online on the website. It runs through Sunday, so plenty of time to get that shopping in. There are 350 exhibitors. I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Alyssa, a good-looking tree there. Thank you so much. Well, the red line, it's been free for riders so far, and that free ride was supposed to end this weekend. But coming up, only here on RTV6, why you'll get to ride for free a little bit longer and how the city is about to get some of its money back as well. At 637, we'll be right back. From Geotis as a hiring Hoosiers partner. Today on RTV6, we're learning new details about the impact of the ongoing free rides for the Red Line. Yeah, Indigo now announcing the extension of those free rides now through November the 30th. They were supposed to end this Sunday. A collection of the fares on the Red Line have been delayed because the My Key Fare vending machines have not been ready. Call 6 Investigates has learned the company behind the system will be responsible for refunding the bus company for the lost fares, which may be in the six figures. Now, that amount has not been determined. Only on RTV6, we're talking with the leaders of the state's largest public transit system about what's next. The board has been 100% committed to get the money back as the contract was set up to protect Indigo and the taxpayers, and we are committed to doing so. So we're going to go recover the money. 
Indigo is expecting to start collecting fares on the red line on Sunday, December the 1st. So, Rafael, what about the money the vendor will have to repay the bus company? You've been crunching these numbers. Uh, so let's break out the whiteboard for that. As you can see, when you get on an Indigo bus, Meredith, it costs $1.75 per ride, okay? That's the, the cost per ride. Indigo has provided more than 200,000 rides since September the 1st. So the possible refund, this is possible, could be $350,000. Wow. Those are the numbers. Now we don't have the final number, but it is expected to be six figures. And this number, it will be negotiated by both legal teams for the vendor and Indigo. So we'll keep on top of the story and all of this information. Time right now is 641 and RTV6 asked you what you want from your elected officials now that they've won your vote. And one issue we can tell you is getting a lot of attention is the problem that some neighborhoods are having and finding fresh food without having to travel a long distance. A $400,000 grant from the city of Indianapolis made the opening of a bodega possible in the summer of one of the city's food deserts. Cleo's Bodega Grocery and Cafe opened five months ago and it sits near MLK and 24th Street, which is considered to be one of Indy's largest food deserts. Brandon Cosby is one of the people behind Cleo's and he says that they hope to be an example for other areas in our city. We really wanted to be able to build a model um, of something that the residents knew belonged to them and that they would be proud to have in their neighborhood. As part of Mayor Joe Hogsett's plan to address food deserts, the Office of Public Health and Safety is accepting applications right now for neighborhood food champions. Those folks will attend workshops and come up with different ways to improve food access. People living on the Near East Side are getting a chance to share their goals and vision for the neighborhood with community leaders. RTV6 spoke to some residents to find out what improvements they want to see. Safety, housing, food access, and economic development were all big topics at a meeting held last night. The goal is to create a long-term quality of life plan. Jonathan Garmini says being involved in the planning process is important for him, and he already feels like his voice is being heard. I think we all need to take some time to maybe listen to each other. And I think once we understand what uh, each other are kind of like seeing for the community, maybe we'll have a better sense of what our community should look like. More than 200 businesses and residents attended a similar meeting last month. Organizers say there will be more of these meetings over the next few months. We have more information on how to get involved in this effort on the RTV6 app and the IndieChannel.com. A woman killed in a house full of snakes. Next on Good Morning Indiana, how that might change laws on just how many of those reptiles some people may be allowed to keep. And if you just can't wait for Christmas to get here, we have the giveaway for you. Coming up in just minutes, your chance to win tickets to the Christmas gift and hobby show. Todd. This morning as you walk out the door, you may notice some leaves falling off the trees, but no precipitation falling from the sky. It's a quiet morning for us with temperatures that are on the chilly side, but will moderate quickly here throughout the course of the morning to near 50 degrees by the time we get to the noon hour. While there's no precipitation today, it's only leaves. Tomorrow, some rain and snow will be falling for your morning commute. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. 2019 Armada. Welcome back. It is 646 on your Wednesday, and here's a look at traffic right now over on the northeast side where things are really picking up. I-465 near Pendleton Pike. You can see everything is traveling up to speed northbound and southbound. We'll have more coming up. Well, this morning, police are still looking into the death of a woman who was found inside of a church on the southeast side of Indianapolis. Police were called in Tuesday morning to the Religious Education Center of St. Patrick Catholic Church on East Prospect Street. That woman's death is being investigated as a homicide. Police identified the victim as Julie Mori, but they still say it's unclear how she died. No suspect information has been released at this time. The death of a woman in western Indiana who was killed by a pet snake could lead to change in the town. The president of the Oxford Town Council believes nearly all residents want limits on certain snakes. The issue came up at a town council meeting Monday night. Benton County Coroner says an eight-foot python strangled 36-year-old Laura Hurst last week. Investigators say Hearst owned around 20 snakes in the home where she was found dead, which was renovated specifically as a place for owners to keep their snakes. Another council member said more information is needed before any action is taken on the issue. At 647,
and let's head out to the west side of Indianapolis. The superintendent of Wayne Township Schools posted these pictures online asking for your help identifying this man. He's accused of breaking into the Wayne Township Preschool School Sunday evening and then taking multiple items. The school is on South High School Road, just north of West Morris Street. The thief took staff members' personal items, food that was meant for students, and electronics. If you have any information, you should contact Metro Police. The YMCA of Greater Indianapolis is getting ready to hire more people. Today, the organization is holding a citywide job fair for available positions. It's all happening this afternoon from 4 to 7 in the evening at the at all of the 12 YMCA of Greater Indianapolis locations. We have much more on this event, plus many jo other job opportunities right now in central Indiana. Those are at our website, HiringHoosiers.com. If you're going to head out today for that job interview or any job interview, grab the coat because it's that season, right? I mean, we just have to get used and to it. It's chilly. That's yes. true. A little chilly. Yes. And if you're going out to walk one of maybe your 101 <laughs> Dalmatian stops. <laughs> uh, yeah. You saw my graphic. You cheated. You got a little sneak preview of it. I can't help myself. Oh, yeah. Look at her. Take a look at her. <laughs> How cute is she to sit on the back of the couch there? Hey, Todd uh, she's Clauser, all ready to go. Disney's on the line. Disney's on the line. <laughs> they want the Dalmatian. Right. Uh, this is a rule of May. I hope I am saying that uh, correctly, but thanks to Jacqueline for uh, sending her in. And you're going to have to look at the paws on her. She's going to turn into a big pup there. But uh, maybe you have to put the warm weather gear on your favorite dog here this morning, as well as bundle up yourself because it's chilly. Temperatures hovering around freezing in most locations, running a little bit warmer here in the city. But as we go throughout the day, temperatures do climb up into the mid 50s. And I point that out, not that that's really warm for this time of year. It's actually a little bit below normal, but it is the warmest temperature we have in our seven day planning forecast and maybe the warmest temperature we have in the next 10 days. And overall today is going to be a partly cloudy day. Now we're starting off with a little bit of cloud cover here and there's even a few flurries to the north. That's not going to cause any issues on the roadways, but just don't be shocked if you're in Kokomo, Lafayette, Monticello, if you see a flurry or two. But once the sun comes up, we'll burn some of this cloud cover off for some sunshine. However, the next storm system is here to our south. That's heading in our direction and that will arrive this evening. So let me walk you through it on TrueCast hour by hour. And we're starting off with again those partly sunny skies throughout a good chunk of the middle half of the morning into the early afternoon hours. But as we get closer to the evening rush, 4.35 o'clock, the clouds overspread the area. Here come the light rain showers throughout the evening hours. So if you have errands to run tonight, you're out late, you may want to have the umbrella handy. Spotty showers overnight, but then more of a steady rain and snow develops throughout the morning drive tomorrow. It's steady rain to the south, scattered snow showers to the north as this colder air comes in. And there could be a pretty good burst of snow that happens mid-morning tomorrow before it starts to taper off. So it looks like a lot of snow on TrueCast. As far as any potential accumulations go, I think there could be some minor ones just on grassy areas, maybe on your car. You have to remember today we're in the 50s. Ground temperatures on the roadway is going to be warm as that snow is falling tomorrow. Temperatures are still going to be above freezing. So it's going to take a lot for it to accumulate on the roadways. It would have to be really, really heavy, and I don't think that's the case. But then we cool off really quickly tomorrow night as that precipitation comes to an end. And as you wake up Friday morning, temperatures anywhere from 17 to 22 degrees. Your high on Friday is only 37 degrees. So it's a cold day for us as we probably don't even crack the 40 degree mark. And and then on Saturday, if you're running the Monumental Marathon, it should be decent running conditions, light winds, clear skies, but just very chilly as temperatures will be in the mid-20s as that race starts and then slowly warming up into the 30s. Overall, the weekend's not bad with sunshine both Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures will be in the 40s for afternoon highs, but late Sunday into Monday, that's when the next cold front comes through and it's even stronger than the one that comes through tomorrow. Highs on Monday and Tuesday might not even get above a freezing as that front comes through some snow showers and Tuesday morning that is not a typo temperatures in the city could be as low as 18 degrees. Ooh, all right, Todd, thank you so much. We do have a traffic alert right now on the roads down here for drivers in Johnson County. If you take I-65 northbound for your commute, you can see that delay. We do have a crash in the left lane. This is near the Worthsville Road exit. So this will impact you if you're heading in from Greenwood, Whiteland, Franklin areas to the south. Expect those delays. You can see US 31, your best detour, also a little slow through that same pocket. So just plan ahead as you're heading out the door. 
A big development in a murder mystery. An arrest warrant issued in connection with that New Hampshire couple found dead in Texas. The latest coming up next hour on Good Morning America. And he's synonymous with the season and he's taking advantage of it. Coming up, grown-up star of a Christmas classic and his latest offering for the holidays. <laughs> You're watching Good Morning. Oh, you have more to say, Lauren. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. the holiday spirit and we have a giveaway for you. Right now is your chance to win a family four-pack of tickets to the Christmas Gift and Hobby Show okay. where you saw Alyssa. This big event runs from today through the 10th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. All you need to do right now is be the sixth caller. So here is your phone number. Get ready. 317-269-1459. And if you don't win today, there are giveaways happening all week long. So good luck. It's 656 here on your Wednesday. We'll be right back. Life. Visit the Hiring Hoosiers Job Board. The holiday season is getting close, and when you think of holiday movies, you probably think of this guy. It's been almost 30 years since McCulky Culkin. Did I say it right? Macaulay Culkin. That's it. <laughs> started the first Home Alone movie. Although he tried to avoid being typecast for a long time, it seems like now he's embracing his legacy, even if it is tongue in cheek. No, every day's a holiday, except for, you know, the holidays. I'm getting too old for this shit. Christmas is fine. Fine. Just in time for the holidays this year, Macaulay Culkin has partnered with Happy Socks, the funky sock company. Hey. And hey, you can get a three pack of Macaulay Culkin socks featuring cute bunnies, apparently it's a new thing. They don't come cheap though. A three pack will cost you $48. Ooh, ooh, that's a little steep. And yeah. I know two guys who love funky socks. <laughs> Raphael, you, you showed me you have shark socks on today. What do you Tom? have on? Uh, mine are plain, just oh, straight man. up black what? socks tonight. You know, I do have one thing to say to you. What's Todd, that? your forecast, wolf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. It's the time of year. It is November. It's actually not bad today. We'll have partly sunny skies throughout the day today. Temperatures get up into the 50s. The spot showers possible here this evening. By this time tomorrow, though, rain and snow in the area. All right, Todd, thanks so much, and thank you for joining us. We're going to be back right here in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America. We hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Enjoy that sunrise and have a great Wednesday.